Hey, what's going on, guys? Let's see. All right, so time shift, obrigado. Man, that's good. MTG, what's going on with you? Hey, yo. Marcus, how you doing this evening? Jimmy, what's up with you, man? How you doing this evening? Actually, let's make sure this is working. Oh, I had my headphones in my on my laptop, so that's why I couldn't hear the feedback. So it's good. We're all good. Drew, how you doing this evening? OG Eric, what's going on, man? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. OG Eric in St. Louis. <laughs> He's like, yeah. I mean, let me let me make sure I I flex like I'm the just the OG Eric. <laughs> uh that's funny. I'm good, man. I'm good. Uh, you know, it is what it is. It's, it's that time of the night. Bumpy, what's going on, man? How you doing? I haven't seen anything from you recently, or if I've just been missing it. You know, YouTube notifications and sometimes the inundation of stuff that I subscribe to, I don't watch. I don't get to watch everybody. Madwood, how you doing this evening? All right, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm still eating my dinner. It's toasted peanut butter and jelly. I haven't even got my drink yet for tonight. How's everybody doing? Summer? Summer winding down for everybody? Well, you know, Labor Day was Monday, so summer's over, right? <laughs> I've been slacking on my pimping. I'm not gonna hold it against you, man. I'm not. Um, you know, I understand. Shoot, I, I already know. What's up, Richard? How you doing this evening, sir? Good night, guys. I love you. You should be going to bed. Mm. All right. Never heard of what? Slacking on... <laughs> Slacking on my pimping? <laughs> Super hot, man. You in Miami. <laughs> it's gonna be hot, Miami. <laughs> Toasted peanut butter and jelly. Oh, man. What? Heck yeah. And even better, it's potato bread. Toasted potato bread? Oh. Mm. Only thing you, you have to be mindful. See the crumbs? Yep, it's so. When eating peanut butter and jelly, be mindful of the crumbs. <laughs> it is good, Eric. Jermaine, dude, I've been asking the same thing. Pat, how you doing this evening? What up, B? How you doing? You not sleep this week? Mm. Richard, I, I know I saw you posted about the um, Santa Maria grill for the Weber and you said you got it the same day you fell. I was hoping everything was okay. <laughs> I did not toast it on the grill. Man, that's way too much effort for what I was trying to, like the little bit of effort I was trying to put out tonight for dinner. Nah, this, this, this was it. Maybe I should do a video on how to toast the peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> That'd be great. Uh, William, how are you doing this evening? So what's good, Dash? Nothing much, man. Just just same stuff, different day. Same stuff, a different day. Hmm. What are you making over there, number two? So for lunch, we're having... Oh, you're. So you're making a a case of a, a case of dia? That would be good. Maybe one case of dia, one burrito. Well, I mean, in a burrito you stuff stuff in it. Oh yeah, that's why I had these. I was kind of dicing. 
You were gonna dice the tortilla? <laughs> oh. That's to ground turkey. And actually, the video of me cooking that is going out tomorrow. Uh, Uncle Bull, how you doing this evening? Eric Thomas, well, thank you so very much for checking in from the, um, what is it, 504? What area, what's the area code in, in New Orleans? Alexa, what's the area code in New Orleans? The area codes in New Orleans that I know of are 504 and 985. All right. I, I, you know, I try to, I'm, I'm pretty good with area codes. Uh, so thank you, sir, for checking in. Uh, I said, what's up, Uncle Bull? Uh, Drew said bacon and ninja foodie tonight. I'm with it. Hey, Jimmy says, let's start out by hitting a thumbs up. I appreciate that. Uh, Johnny... From Man That's Good Barbecue, he said, what's up, Taste Tessa number two? Hello. Johnny, you impressed that I remembered your name? What's in the cup tonight? I have not decided what's in the cup tonight, Marcus. My cup, my can cup, I, can you what? Can I make your cup tonight? Can you make my cup of what? Of surprise. Oh, I you, don't know. You just tell me what you don't want in it, and then I'll put something in There's really only one thing that I can, oh, hold on. Let me air. So... The cup tonight actually has a new addition. I had to, you know, I had to represent my man Grumpus. He 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 helped me out. He he sent me some barbecue sauce, and he's like in the in the well. Technically, there's Texas here, and then there's Texas here on the cup, but nothing in the cup just yet. And I was I was debating on I was thinking about making some tea, some iced tea. Or actually, it was gonna be hot tea, and I was just gonna pour it over ice because I have I have some more of that crown peach left, um, and then I also have some Miller Lights in the refrigerator. So I wasn't feeling good earlier, so I went and tried to lay down for a little bit. So I was like, yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna be doing any heavy drinking tonight. But uh, thanks for asking, Marcus. Uh, Brian is gearing up for the weekend. I was going to do some beef backs, but traffic was horrible, and uh, got home late. All right. There's nothing like a peanut butter and jelly on a fresh baked loaf of bread. Yo, Carlos, I agree. All right, Eric says 504. Richard says 504. I did I did say 504 correctly. Bubba, what's going on? Johnny is impressed that I remembered his name. Victor, he's just checking in. We'll be in and out uh, for about the next half hour. Well, I definitely appreciate you popping in and saying what's up. Ben, how are you doing this evening? Leah Lee, still digging your full cook videos, man. Well, that's what's up. Thank you so very much. I don't know, Jimmy. I'm. I'm not even gonna lie, man. I'm. I'm not. I'm. I'm leery. I have to get up in the morning. I actually have to get up and do a cook tomorrow. My uncle is coming down to my house. You guys remember my uncle? He came to my house and we did that cook on the side of the house with the shrimp. That uncle is coming to my house. He's picking up two briskets tomorrow. Uh, one brisket for him and his fiance, and one brisket for his next door neighbor. And. They're supposed to be at my house tomorrow at 3 p.m., so I got to get it done. So I don't know if I want to drink too heavily tonight because I, I have to get up tomorrow morning and start the drum. Uh, Taylor says, hey, yo, uh, cheers, Dash and Company. Uh, who gave us a thumbs down? Uh, well, you know, haters going to hate. It's okay. Hope everyone, <laughs> hope it has an energy drink. I know. Uh, B says, this sticker's are getting made. All right, Grumpus. Hey, Grumpus, how you doing? How you doing this evening, Grumpus? Hopefully everything's good with you. Uh-huh, Ho hopefully all is well. Bango sobroso, que te pasa contigo? Nada con paso conmigo. I thought you'd like that, Grumpus. I was sitting here and I was like, you know what? I was like, this will work. <laughs> Holy cow, look at that big old spider. I'm a zombie. Oh, dude. <laughs> Hurry up <laughs> before it gets away. 
All right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right. Um, oh, it's you. It is you. Yo, hurry up, hurry up. Can you get it? It's hurry down. Where'd it go? Oh, it's right down here. Ah! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's you one more time. Go ahead. Oh, all right, it's dead. It's dead. It was just stuck in the. F oh, dude, <laughs> knock it off into the trash can. It's burning. Look, <laughs> no, hurry up before it dies. The 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 fly swatter. It smells <laughs> so bad. Oh. Don't bring it over. Oh, man. Dude. Dude. Oh, turn it off. Turn it off. Turn it off. Oh, my gosh. Oh, oh my goodness. Aren't y'all glad y'all signed up for this? Yo. Mommy. Jimmy, yes. Loiter's going to loiter. I just burned up a spider with the zapper. Like, it got stuck in the dinghy. And then I just... It was a big spider. It was a big spider. It was huge. Really? Yes, of course it was huge. Oh, no, it was like that big. Yo, Grumpus is zapping. Uncle Bull said he fried that thing. And then he's just laughing. Looks like I joined just in time. Is it Gasa? Oh, yes. Oh, that spider is eating something else you didn't want. Oh. Eric said, got him! <laughs> Wait, Johnny said, killer number two. <laughs> What's up, Sean? How you doing this evening? Oh, it smells bad. I literally the sound of my whole day. <laughs> hey, Jamie, how are you doing this evening? <laughs> Jamie's husband ordered one of the, um, the fly spotters as well. And apparently they got theirs today, and he has been uh, zapping flies all around inside and outside of the house. And uh, <laughs> look, taste sensor number two is giggling over there for you, Jamie. <laughs> look, this I love that flies. Uh, you love it. I mean, yeah. how do you think I feel about it? Look, he's <laughs> he's in a, in his pumpkin shirt. Yes. Pumpkin oh boy. Just, just, you know what you should write on the back, PSL. He doesn't get it. Yeah, dude. What? PSL, I get it. What is it? That's a joke for us. We don't need to tell everybody. <laughs> well played, sir. Well played. <laughs> 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 Yeah, he is proud, Eric. <laughs> Look, Grumpus said he got his swatter on Monday. Uh, got in trouble with it within an hour. <laughs> yeah, if you like the blood, blood zapper, you should watch uh, Styro, Styro Pyro video on making a 50k volt version. He's a bit out there, but it's crazy. Styro Pyro, so like styrofoam, he burns styrofoam, Taylor? T-Y-R-E-Y-R-O. -E Pyro. Um... Oh my gosh. This is... My man said he overclocked the bug zapper to 50,000 volts. <laughs> hey, go on. Yo, I'm not going to lie, though. He's got 150 volts. And that may seem like a lot, but I feel like I can do a lot better. Now, before I start turning this thing down, i got to at least try the original product. So I stuffed in my two AA batteries, and I see it has a nice fancy little indicator like So I, I, I usually watch everything sped up, and especially if I'm listening to something while broadcasting this, I, I speed it up. Uh, so I don't get copyrighted or anything. Now I have smoke spiders. Yes, I. You know what? You're absolutely right. Uh, wait, dude. There's, there, there's one. There's one. Cook. Just cook. Don't worry about it. Don't. No. 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 Cook, man. Cook. 
I did this happen. Oh gosh, I shouldn't have told him. I saw a fly now. He's, he's on a mission. Alright, listen out. Can he get it? Look over by the window. That's where they usually hang out. There it is. I see one. Straight ahead. Straight ahead. Straight ahead. I just wish these kids would close the damn door. Anyway. I'm trying not to hit the Yeah, yeah, alright, chill. Put the put it down. Put it down. Yeah, we're gonna burn your food. Uh, I took the heat before I ran. I know the topic is charcoal, but someone uh want me to come up with a cost effective menu for 150 people. Well Bumpy, uh we we can talk about it in the second hour. <laughs> and what's cost effective? Cause all that says to me is cheap. Are you afraid of spiders? No, I'm not afraid of spiders, Kent. It's just he wanted to, he was amped on uh, killing the spider with the fly spider. So, you, yeah, you missed it. Mario, how are you doing this evening? This is nice charcoal haul. Thank you so very much. Yeah, Bumpy, um, cost effective and barbecue, those are things that do not go hand in hand. Um, I can already tell you that you're probably going to have some trouble. Like, I had, I had, oh, dog. I had this dude, right? He hit me up. And see, this is already how we go off topic. And I didn't even start drinking yet. But let me get this quickly. So I had this guy hit me up, and he's had my food. So I'm like, all right, cool. <clears throat> he, you know, he's the brother of someone who ordered around Christmas or Thanksgiving last year, yada, yada, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, all right. He said, well, we're, we're having an event for 80 people. I'm like, okay. I said, uh, usually 80 people. I do it like this. I do pork, chicken, beef, chicken, and pork, blah, blah, blah. He's like, all right, well. We really just want the brisket because I've had the brisket, really like the brisket, and salmon. I'm like, salmon is expensive. Uh, you know, salmon is like $65 of filet. He's like, no, 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 it's cool, but that's what we want. Okay. So I give him a price for some salmon and some and some some brisket. And then he's like, well, how much, how much would it cost for, you know, like to do some sides, to do without sides, like with delivery to, to this place and to the... I ended up writing up four quotes for this dude, and he, he, you know, he's like, oh, my, my wife or my fiance and I decided to go in a different direction. Yo, that is the worst ever. The worst, the worst, the worst. When you, s you spend all this time doing, you know, now mind you, it might take me about an hour or so to put the quote together. Well, the four different quotes that he wanted together. And he just wanted the price breakdown that, like, from most expensive thing to the least expensive thing. And then in the end, he didn't go with anything. Now, I'll, to his credit, he did end up buying a brisket. But he got five pounds of brisket this past weekend. And actually, you guys will probably see the video of me cooking his brisket coming up next week or in two weeks, I guess. Um, but anyway, I digress. All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's a charcoal available in your nearby store. Oh man, Taylor. Ooh, sorry to hear that. Dude, sometimes they just really want you to come in the store. Pull out the barbecue sauce, Bongo Sobroso says, for that, uh, for that fly, or oh, for the fly or the spider. It doesn't matter. Barbecue, yep, for the spider. What's up, Ricer? How you doing this evening? Smoking Bears, what's going on, Lee? He says, hey, hey, yo, Jess, uh, and chat, just getting ready for work, but listening in. Thank you. Dude, did I did I miss the Wednesday cast iron Wednesday today? Uh, smoking Bears. to look it up later but I, I feel like I didn't see it how long do you think that uh coal hall will last you uh George you know what um so hey we have a, a minor celebrity in the chat so George is the George that get oh hey is there any more of that um my stomach in the refrigerator or did y'all eat it all the meat that you and I tried last week can you hand it to me now please Yes, you can have some. Yo, you hit it? You hit it. No. Then why, you knew that, <laughs> that wasn't like where I put it, which yes, meant it that you hit it. I didn't hide it. Go I ahead, just, just look at it. You can have one. 
Jim, but yeah, this is here. Plus you can have the, the last one, and I'm gonna eat these. <laughs> Look here, here. You get one more. Yeah. Well, you get half one. You know. Okay. This is here. Nice. You get the. Thank you. Um, all right. So anyway, uh, George is the gentleman who I met up with the subscriber, and uh, we literally we didn't break bread. We broke Bastorma. Wait, really? Yeah, well, I mean, he had the worst stomach at his house for me. So. Thank you. Ah, yes, Doris, thank you. Mm. Trying to step this for you. <laughs> great topic. Lewis is a great topic. I fight this battle all the time. Please help. <laughs> all right. So the best thing I found to store charcoal is shelving. And unfortunately, charcoal is not something that you can compress. Uh, it's not something that you can kind of hide or get rid of. The only other thing that I've found as far as a solution for storage of charcoal is to kind of... You, you ever see those those racks that you can put like kind of in your garage, like the hide stuff up in? What's wrong now? I spilled all of it everywhere. You what? I spilled all of it everywhere. All of... Oh, your burrito. Yes. Well, if you give me like an hour and a half, I can help you fold it up. Uh, Mr. Richard, how you doing this evening? But like some of those overhead storage things just to get it out of the way. But I do not recommend storing charcoal on the floor. Uh, ask me how I know is just, you know, rain or water will get in your garage or in your space and it can definitely ruin some charcoal. Now, one of the things that's good about some of the bags that are that the charcoal is coming in now is they're like double bagged and or sometimes that plasticky kind of material and they don't necessarily get wet and they keep moisture out but i mean still it's a thing where your charcoal can actually absorb moisture especially if you live in an area like me where there's high humidity uh, uh, uh. well thank you george i appreciate that uh, so Mario, you know, it's funny. <laughs> he says, anyone have a dedicated shed for charcoal and barbecue accessories? When I went to see Tom in uh, Massachusetts, he had a little shed and in his shed, he had a lot of firewood and charcoal and, and barbecue stuff, but it wasn't like a hundred percent his barbecue stuff. Like, cause he had, I'm pretty sure he had a lawnmower and other things like that in there, but I mean a good probably half of it was definitely barbecue stuff. Kurt says, hey, yo, what's happening? <laughs> Taylor says, yeah, that plastic helps a good bit. Humidity will kill it in the end. I've ended up with molded charcoal at the end of a long storage period in my damp basement. He says, don't recommend. Well, you know what, sometimes though, when you get it on sale and you have to do what you have to do as far as keeping it where you can keep it, and maybe it's just one of those things where you might need to air it out, you know, like pull it out, and, you know, put it in the container or something where you can kind of let it air out. Hmm. Lou says, Jealous Devil has plastic resealable zipper bag. Uh, it's okay. Better than paper, I guess. Yeah. Um, I put racks on the floor to set my charcoal lawn. Yep. As long as it's not on the floor, usually where there's moisture that can get to it, and, you know, for whatever reason, I don't know if the charcoal wicks the moisture from the ground, but I have some, like, some cheap shelving I found. I don't even know where, but I put it in the corner of my garage, and that's primarily where I store the Kingsford because it's at the end of the garage and I can kind of get to it. And it's on, the, it's on the side of the garage that you guys don't see very often. And I haven't actually stacked the all of the bags of charcoal that I got. Uh, actually, that was just this Sunday. All right. Mario um, says, I'm looking at a cheap plastic shed from Sam's Lifetime 53 cubic feet. All right. I've seen those Lifetime sheds and they don't look too, too bad. I mean, if you, I don't know how waterproof they are. Like, my mom has a shed in her backyard. Now, mind you, that shed is, um, it's over 20 years old. 
and it leaks but it's also over 20 years old now it is uh like a plastic composite and i think the majority of the problem is not the top of the shed it's where the water has gotten underneath of it and rotted the wood base that it's sitting on so what she really needs to do is get a concrete pad poured and then it'll probably never be a problem again grumpy says i store open bags and metal trash cans with tight lids all right uh new bags stored on shelves with a tarp covering cool Victor says, if you buy massive amounts of uh, briquettes, keep a fan on them. Just enough airflow to keep them from sucking up the moisture. I have some I've had to cover. I've had over a year. Excuse me, and it's still rocking. This is, I guess, an experiment. Uh, Lou says, I do like putting them in storage bins. The only problem with that is using different brands and or types. Yeah, because then you kind of have to have multiple bins or, like, I, I have, um, I won't say the same issue. But when I first bought pellets, I bought those buckets to stack up on the, in the corner of the house. And then I, I, I have been just buying one kind of pellets uh, because I found, well, at least, I don't know, as of late, the Pit Boss pellets have been very dusty. Um, there's been a lot of, uh, um, what is it in there? Just like dust. I don't know. Where, I guess sawdust is really what it is. And it's just been a lot of it. Uh, Rich says, I have a whole, whole rack system set up in my garage. Pallets on the floor. I'll try to take a pic tomorrow and post it on Instagram. All right, just tag me in it because I'll forget to look. Uh, <laughs> okay. He says, BRB. He says, the two. He says, the, he said, BRB, two, yo, going wild. His two year old son. Meigs, how you doing this evening? Oh, man, this is the last bit. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Um, this is such a treat, and mm. it's hot. Yes. Paris Hilton, as Paris Hilton would say, turn this, turn the burner off. Oh, it's okay. not off. Mm. I've heard that pellets absorb moisture and break apart, but don't have first-hand experience. So I can attest and tell you that they do absorb moisture, but you really have to get them wet and or they really have to be sitting around for a long time. I don't have any pellets that last long enough for that. Um, I've seen and heard people saying that they have issues with pellets doing that even in their cookers. I don't, the pellets don't last long enough for that. Not for me. But then again, never bought enough charcoal to worry about age. Uh, if it's old, I'm not cooking enough. There you go, Meeks. I agree. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Man, that was perfect. A little meat with my peanut butter and jelly. Mm -mm. Mm. Yeah, I'm kind of dancing. So what? What's up, Spanky? How you doing, sir? It's been a minute. I missed you, man. You're out there being a superhero in your community. Taste test number two is definitely making his lunch over there. He's he's like concentrating. Uh, Bumby says, what do I do with my leftover charcoal, leave it in the bag, or put it in a separate bin? Um, like anything that's left over inside of one of the cookers after I cook? Man, that's the base for the next cook. <laughs> I don't take it out. The only time I'll kind of move it around is if I'm using the bottom of the uh, the kettle, and then I'm using, I use like the slow and sear, and then I have to just pick up the remnants of the last little bit of charcoal, and I'll put it in slow and sear. Or I'll put it into the, and usually it's like I'm using the slow and sear and then I'm using the vortex and I'll pour whatever remnants are in the slow and sear into the vortex and that's the base for the next cook, you know. And most of the time it's just, it's, it's still there. Um, I've even had charcoal left over in, in the drum after using it and it's almost like the same thing. I, you know, I'm like, I'm not going to worry about shaking out that last little bit of charcoal that's stuck at the bottom or at the bottom. 
I just pour new charcoal on top, light the fire, and let it ride. Um, Taylor says, uh, one thing that's hard to tell with charcoal is how long it sat around in the store. Unless there's a date on it. Uh, uh, could in a garden section of a store and collect moisture pellets too. Yes, you're absolutely correct, Taylor. So you know what's funny? I remember going to the Sam's near my house and they had charcoal on sale and it was cheaper than like ten dollars and at the time like i was i don't know if i was in between cooks or broke or whatever and what they ended up telling me was they had almost a half trailer load of this particular charcoal in the store and i'm like wait what and they're like yeah we have a half trailer load of it you know so you can and like because i was like well is there any no i'm not doing a live stream and I knew I uh anyway i took like i said i come to find out that they had a half trailer load of charcoal and they were trying to get rid of it because it was from last season uh so yes taylor that can happen where you'll have old charcoal mm -hmm. no problem robert you know it's all right you know what i haven't had any bourbon out recently maybe that's why i haven't seen you pop out in the comments uh, i was gonna have a bag of kinks for I mean, dude, the half a bag of Kingsford just gets chucked on the side. Haven't you seen me pour charcoal and then put it on the side of the house? I mean, that's it, man. I, it it don't last that long. I wish I had a dollar for every empty bag of charcoal I have laying around my house currently. Currently. Um, aside from using some of those empty bags to put charcoal in or ash in and things like that. Fantasy barbecue. How you doing? Uh, Meek says I just roll the top of the charcoal bag, but they don't last long anyways, but they sit outside under the eaves. Yep uh, I don't have my stuff on stock, uh, so it won't be a great side of it. No, 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 don't worry about it Man, shoot I No, I, I, I go through some charcoal. <laughs> I do I Man this 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 last bag this is the last bag that i have the, the bag that i'm currently using on the side of the house is everything you're doing he's, he's just making the most noise back there I'm trying. I'm trying not to make noise uh but this bag of charcoal was sitting in the back of the pickup truck and i did some rearranging some some things in the garage and i'm like yo this is a this is a bag of the western lump charcoal from two years ago and fired it up and it's fine it's like i said it's been in the garage so it, it you i see the um the other the, the pan is on i just you know want to make sure you know it's on yes yeah, okay um but yeah that i mean in the bag was sitting in the back of the pickup bed and i'm like what hold on i got a lump charcoal bet let me grab this bag and bring it up to the side of the house so I've been using that uh, with the drum, and actually I've yeah I've been using that with the drum. Yes. Wow. Uh, hurry up! He gave me a warning this time that he was gonna be making noise. Mario says uh, Jealous Devil's coming out with the XL briquette. So I saw in Harry so video. Wish I could afford that brand. <laughs> oh man, I wish I could find more of that Western. It was a, dude, forty pounds of charcoal for ten bucks. What? 40 pounds of lump charcoal for 10 bucks? Man, who you telling? I wish I could get more of it, man. I Again, you know, sometimes when charcoal goes on sale, if I don't if I don't have a whole, I don't say a whole bunch of money, but I just so happen to have done a big catering event over the weekend and I did it on the big catering event on, on big catering event on Friday. I did a 5 pound brisket on Saturday. And then I did a whole brisket on Sunday. So not that I was rich, but I mean, I was able to take my profits and invest back into my company. So me buying $325 worth of charcoal, I mean, it is what it is. I bought so much that year. I flexed the table in. Wow. <laughs> I wish, man. So that was the thing. When I bought when I bought it the first year, I bought it. I was like, oh, this is this bag of charcoal. And I tried it on. I was like, whoa, all right, hold up. I like it. Let me go get I think I got like three or four more bags. 
and that was all I could get at the time. Like that was all I could like physically get because of, of what vehicle I was in. And I went back to get more, man. It was gone. I was like, dang. Then the next year, I looked for it. I looked for it, and then I I found a bunch. I think last year or two years ago now, I think I got ten to fifteen bags of it, and that was like pretty much again. I was in Vanna, so I had the room. But I, w I was coming back from a catering event or something, and I was like, all right, 15 bags is enough, because that was a limit I could put on the cart that I was using. Uh, crazy man, how you doing? Hey, is it Wednesday or Thursday? Today is Wednesday. It is Wednesday. Don't make me think I'm going crazy, man. Big Reggie Reg, what's going on? Just more your thing. Does it vary between lump and briquettes? No. I, 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 Lou, I... I'm just telling you that it is a possibility. Um, I don't think it's one of those things where if you leave a bag of charcoal, now if you leave a bag of charcoal sitting outside and it is, you know, exposed to rain, exposed to elements, it will probably, it could probably have some problems. But for the most part, the charcoal that I have and use, it might be sitting outside for two or three months, the absolute most, because, but for the most part, I keep my charcoal stored in my garage, and there's a lot of airflow in that garage. Um, not as much moisture like that just sits, but there are times when it is um, it can be really hot and sticky in the garage. But actually, I do ha I have a fan in the garage running all the time. Um, if you sign up for rewards or something, they do 50% off, uh, and they can ship it to a store for free. Yeah, uh, when they roll out. Uh, store with that much charcoal that the cashiers ever say anything hell yeah i mean so the whole thing was lou when i bought the 15 bags or so of that western lump the last time i was at this particular walmart and i i asked the young lady that was in in the the seasonal department i said hey, you know can i have a cart i need to get some charcoal and when i rolled past her again and i had like 10 bags of it stacked up she was like that's not some charcoal. She's like, is there any of it left over there? And I'm like, yeah. So I do get weird looks and, and comments. And and usually I use that uh, as a opportunity. What? Just put it back in the container. Okay. Or you know what? How about this? Do me a favor. Um, Get some butter and saute egg in it. Like, just scramble an egg in the turkey meat, please. So it won't go to waste since it's already hot. Alright, Jamie says, okay, final settling in. Oh, settling in after dealing with dinner. Hey, yo, Dash, what's quack a lacking? She's got jokes. She's got jokes. Ha. <laughs> hey, crazy man barbecue company. I already know, man. Uh, you know, and, and it only makes it worse that it is a it's technically like a Tuesday because of the holiday Monday. So, yeah. Big Red said a buddy of mine was doing work at Wayne Newton's ex-wife's house. All right. Uh, and she gave him a bag of Japanese charcoal, which I know uh, has been trying. It's supposed to burn really good. Hot and long. Is it, um, is it like some of the, uh, 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 coconut hull or coconut shell charcoal. I've seen and heard some great things about that coconut hull stuff. <laughs> Lou said, I would have left one bag. I, I left some in an open five gallon bucket on the shed, and we have a lot of high humidity days here, no problems. I keep that way over winter, too. Uh, in an open five gallon bucket, Chuck says. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, you use it. Do you, I mean, how long does it take for you to use that five gallon bucket of charcoal? Less uh, cheap lump. I bought was a Sonora brand and it smelled awful in startup. I hope Western is better if I'm able to find any. So, Mario, I can tell you the Western does not smell the best on startup sometimes. It, it, I mean, it's not that bad. But it does, I mean, it, it, it definitely off gasses some, but it doesn't last very long. And by the time you start cooking on it, whatever issues or whatever you're smelling, it's gone. 
I think we should take advantage of any deals big or small right now. Lumber features are going through the roof right now. Any guess on what charcoal is made of? Uh, I don't know, Grumpus. What's it made of? <laughs> no, it's wood, but it's really dense. And when you tap it together, it sounds literally like glass. So I've, I've, I've seen um, some of those type of things, and I know exactly that, like ting, 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 that you're that you're talking about, because um, it's like all that's left is the cellulose from the wood. But man, Reg, that that's the, the hey, look, while, while I'm here, this is gonna be good. Found some of it on Amazon. Holy cow. Yo, three pounds of this charcoal is $55. What? For a three pound bag of this lump charcoal. All natural, chemical free, chemical free, long burning, Japanese oak charcoal from Japan. What? Oh, wow. That's crazy. A three pound bag is $55. That's best for hibachi cooking, direct coal type of stuff. Well, uh, actually, can I just have some sriracha? Yeah, that's what I was Thank you. I'm going to get like paprika or something. Uh, you know, ooh, can I have some Uncle Steve's spicier? Is it there or no? No, I just want the spicy. I'll take that one. That's fine. And the sriracha, please. I'm just going to put this. I don't normally season. I usually just salt and pepper, but. I put salt and pepper in there already. Oh, all right. Well, thank you. Can I try it? Sure. Oh, here. Before. Oh. Try that side. Uh, sorry, oh. Spanky. You, go ahead. You want it? No, you eat it. Are you sure? I had the brilliant idea of. So he had some, like I said, the ground turkey meat that you're going to see tomorrow. He used it and made a burrito out of. So kudos for him for ingenuity. But he had some ground turkey meat left, and I said, "Well, just mix the eggs in. Mix an egg in it." Mmm. But I know the turkey. I didn't season it when I cooked it because I didn't want whatever I seasoned it with to interfere with whatever I was cooking or going to cook it in. So I knew it needed something. So, but sriracha? Mmm, it's good. Hold on, hold on, Spanky. How about this, is this better? Mmm. I'm not eating anything, nope. <laughs> Man, Red Joe, this stuff, this is crazy. A three pound bag, let's see what the reviews, 47 ratings. Wow. All right, so this person says, do not, in capital letters, use these for grilling burgers and steaks in your backyard. No extra benefit, and you'll needlessly waste money. This is, however, ideal for indoor or outdoor grilling on a small yakitori grill. This is a search on Amazon. The charcoal gets fiery hot and is completely smokeless. If doing indoors, I put the yakitori grill under a 600 CFM fan hood in the kitchen. No smoke, but the carbon monoxide will still kill you. You only need a small amount to put out a blazing amount of heat and skewers of chicken thighs will cook in about two minutes per side butterfly chicken thigh meat needs uh three to four minutes per side best of all when done uh pick up the bin chotan with a metal tongue and place it in a dutch oven put the lid on quickly extinguishes oh i guess the that's the charcoal the next day wipe off the charcoal brush with the paper towel and then keep reusing it until it's gone pro tip for lighting if you're using these small uh, ben Chaton sticks, place it in the yakitori and light it up with a butane torch. 
uh, creme brulee torch for larger sticks or other brands I put the charcoal in the chimney starter with briquettes the briquettes get it going fast and in about 20 or 30 minutes the charcoal is ready to be transferred to a yakitori grill wow yeah, the name of this is Brush yes. Uh, who got the premium charcoal marked market star? I don't know, Mario, but dude, I mean, obviously this this person, you know, that they they wrote a heck of a review and seems pretty legit that they know what they're talking about. But I sure as heck ain't spending sixty dollars almost for three pounds of charcoal, twenty pounds. But then again, you know what? <laughs> So the Japanese, like there was a a financial boom in the what? I guess in the early '90s. Can you put this stuff back, please? Thank you, sir. Um, and yo, some of the stuff they do and some of the stuff they have, wow. <laughs> Alan says so. Can a dog get his pulled pork pancakes or what? No pancakes tonight, Alton. I do have some ground turkey uh, mixed in with some eggs, though. Mmm. It's delicious. <laughs> Alton, what's up with you? Hey, Taylor. Have a good one, man. Mike Hall, how you doing this evening? All right. Well, thanks, Reg. I I'm I'm definitely looking forward to seeing that. And if I don't see it, make sure you tag me on Instagram or something to let me know that it that it, it has gone up because I would definitely would be interested in seeing that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, Spanky says the Japan charcoal like the best for the Korean barbecue around the table. Agreed. Um out uh, take care, Alton. Yeah, all right. Sixty dollars is nothing for me. I'm broken in the smoke on the thirty-first of the month. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. Just, just let it go over your head. It wasn't meant for you. We'll talk about it later. Just remind me tomorrow, maybe. I'm not sure. I will be here tomorrow. I'm working from home. Okay. <laughs> Mike says just getting ready for the weekend. Ever try Fogo charcoal? I was it Fogo? No, it was um, it was the big green egg charcoal, but I think it was. I, I thought it was like it was overrated. I don't know. I, but I've never had the Fogo charcoal. <clears throat> <laughs> oh, Spanky, just make sure it's not pressure treated. <laughs> Spanky says, we are so broke, we smoke barbecue with two by fours. <laughs> if you can see Taste the Number Two, he's doing a pee pee dance right now. He's, he's trying to get his lunch together <laughs> and for tomorrow. And he's standing there doing a the pee pee dance. <laughs> Why he won't just stop, go pee. Wash his hands and then come back and finish. But he's determined. Dude, what are you doing now? You're like. I'm done, but I was looking for snapbacks. All right. And there's no more food. You just. Well, there's another box of them. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know, I found hmm. it. Well, you didn't really find it. You just picked it up off of the shelf. Yes. All right, go upstairs. You're distracting me, son. All right. I think I can ask him for a beer. <sighs> Preston says I like Fogo Premium. What's up, Preston? How you doing? He says, hey, yo. Smeggy reminds everyone to hit that like button. If you haven't already, please hit that thumbs up. I'd greatly appreciate it. Can you do me a favor? Can you hand me two beers out of the refrigerator? 
that's that's the last thing I'll ask you to do. For like the next minute or so. The longer you stay down here, the longer I'm gonna keep asking you to do things for me. Well, I have to do things too, so. Oh. <laughs> B said he made it back. Lamar has ever tried Jealous Devil. I got some a few months ago. No, I have not. Um, I have not tried it just because I've seen it. All right, perfect. I've seen it. I just haven't been in a position like whenever I've seen it, it was like I was in, I think it was in Lowe's or Home Depot and I didn't need charcoal and I wasn't like, oh, I need to experiment with this particular charcoal. So I didn't get it. Plus, I was right in there for something unbarbecue related. <laughs> it was like right in, right out. First love smokers, what's going on? B, welcome back, Carter. Cotter, rather. Oh wow. What? These don't fit. They're just too big. Why? What are you trying to do with it? Put it in a plastic bag? Yes, just so it won't open up and spill. Just use one of the shopping bags, unfortunately. Yeah, just use one of the shopping bags the from the stores. These, these no, are... no, 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 not no. Just not, don't waste that, cause that's that's a waste. What I'm saying is, turn around behind you and use one of the shopping bags right there, and just wrap it up in the shopping bag. Taste lesson in two. I'm quite sure your dad doesn't want Lake Michigan uh, in the house. Uh, I might have. The, not sure. Oh, as far as putting the beer in the freezer, ah, I'll be all right. I won't forget it. <laughs> uh, Rice says I got a bag of the Jealous Devil, but haven't used it yet. He said I heard it gets hot. Is it a lump charcoal or is it briquettes? Anyone have like recommend the Oklahoma Joe's Bronco drum smoker? So Mario, I know Ricer has one of those smokers, and there's somebody else that has one, but I don't I don't know if they're here. Uh, FC Bay. What did you say? Yes. All right. I will tell Preston, test us number two says hello. What is that? FC Bay. I can't read that one. It's 10, is it 10 p.m. yet? Seven minutes, Russell. Seven minutes. Yeah, Ricer, lump charcoal gets way hot, <laughs> way, way hot, uh, like wicked hot, <laughs> all right? Where's, where's my man Jeff LaFoe from up in New England, and he could probably, you know, relate, or Frio, uh, when you talk about something getting wicked hot, yeah, lump charcoal in general gets wicked hot. Jasmine, how have I been? How have you been? Hopefully you've been getting some rest. Uh, FCB, all right. That works for me. I try. Joe Stevens, how you doing? Uh, football club, Bayern in Germany. Thanks, Spanky. Well, uh, Guten Morgen? I don't know, I guess it's morning there, shoot. 10 o'clock here is like 2 o'clock in the morning there, just about. Wow. What? Unless you have like a night job or something, that's late to stay up just to watch your favorite YouTube videos. Well, remember when I was in Germany with Mommy, I got up in the middle of the night to do the live stream from Germany. Oh, <laughs> wait, you still... You didn't go off of their 9 p.m.? No, because their 9 p.m. is a different 9 p.m. than this 9 p.m. Do you not understand how time works? This 9 p.m. would be like 4 o'clock. It was 3 o'clock in the morning. Yikes. Yeah. Yeah. I got up in the middle of the night and I did the live stream. Ah, uh, yeah, jealous stuff was up for Argentina. I think it hurt us really dense and burned crazy hot. Hmm. Only use three quarters of a chimney. 
of lump yeah what's going on brother Thyron? thank you so very much man i appreciate that uh da, 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 da. yes he has videos on the uh bronco William says, do you ever mix the two lump and briquettes? I, I won't say all the time uh, because I haven't had as much lump lately, but I do mix lump and briquettes. Um, I, it's, it's like you get the best of both worlds. You get the heat and the flavor from lump and you get the longevity from briquette, briquettes. The one thing a lot of people don't like about lump charcoal is that it burns hotter and faster. So you'll, it'll, like, you'll need to replenish it sooner. But I mean, it's one of those things where the trade-off with the extra flavor is worth it not burning up faster but it it kind of comes with the territory uh, joe says 755 here on the west coast well here on the east coast it's almost 10 o'clock ricer is inundated he's he he, he 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 welcome to my world ricer where you have 14 cookers and 13 things to cook and you, you can't figure out what you're going to cook what on. He says, yo, Dash, how you doing? Cheers from Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Well, thank you, sir, so very much for your service. Really appreciate that. He just says, Miller like the champagne and beers. I thought that was, um, what is the champagne and beers? Miller High Life is the champagne and beers. But I'm not discriminating. Yeah, Miller High Life. Uh, what beef would I use to make lunch meat? Uh, it kind of depends on what kind of lunch meat you're trying to make. I mean, I have some beef uh, bologna upstairs in my refrigerator that I need to smoke and uh, do something with. You could do like a roast beef, uh, you know, like shave some roast beef, like to make a deli sandwich. Yo, I had some, it was, it was kind of like a pastrami. But it was like a hot, yo, it was so good. One of my subscribers, uh, I actually, oh, thank you. Um, I met up with him. This guy's name is Teddy. He lives, you know, on the other side of town. And he invited me to his house to try this. And, and it's like, he gave me, he sent me the recipe for it. And I'm going to possibly try it. But it was a corned beef, it was a corned beef brisket that, he smoked, and then after it was smoked, he steamed it. So, good night, Taste Tessa number two. Thank you so very much. Is your, what is it sitting out on the counter? That's my lunch. That's the stuff that I don't want to get for. Well, I mean, it's going to get room temperature, but I just don't want it cold. It's like popcorn and crackers. All right. You don't want to put it in the upstairs refrigerator? Wait, why would I put it in the upstairs refrigerator? That's cold. Well, I just... I just don't want it to be left out and you you know need it to be in a refrigerator. No, I took the watermelon out. Okay. All right. So there's nothing in there that needs to be refrigerated. No. That's no, all I was asking. All right. Uh, Jasmine says we've been uh, getting rest. Uh, my husband's very helpful. Uh, he helps with the baby while he washes you. Picking up the cool tips. Well, that's what's up. Uh, she might know how to barbecue by the time she turns one. Look. For her first birthday, put a rib in her hand and take some pictures. Just thank me later. I, I got a young lady who is uh, actually, she hit me up the other day and and she sent me a picture of a of a baby and it was a first birthday announcement. Um, little baby had a rib in his hand. She said, um, I want this. I'm like, say less. I said, when is the baby's birthday? <laughs> she said November. I said, good. We have some time. So. Joe says, I have a large first flow on a trailer. I only use wood. Have you ever tried only wood? Uh, yes, Joe. So I have a multitude of, uh, some multitude. I have a couple different smokers. Um, and I've run Bernadette on wood only. I've run Bernadette on charcoal. And I still haven't figured out which I, <coughs> I like best. I don't know if I'm going to have to do like a hybrid of uh, a combination. I tried to run Vicky on wood, and that is everybody always laughs. But last time I tried to run Vicky on wood, that's when the fire department came to my house and the helicopters were hovering. Alton, you know, Alton always laughs at that one. Um, but Bessie is my big wood burning smoker, and I only use wood in there. 
Um, and that's just what only I have on occasion started the fire with like a base of charcoal, like a chimney. But I don't see the value adding that, especially when I'm waiting the same amount of time. If I would just use a torch and get the fire going and then build up the coal base that way. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, I'm at my local grocery store. Hey, Jasmine, no worries, man. She just said thanks for remembering us. So I remember some folks more than others. I, you know, Big Reg. I don't know how I remember Big Reg's name. I mean, but Johnny, that dude, it took him like a month for me to remember his name. Uh, da -da -da. Yeah, Mike says roast beef. Please do a video on smoked bologna on the drum. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, all right. What's going on, Chef Arell? How you doing, man? Maria says, hey, Dash, and all the lovely people in the chat. Well, thank you. Hopefully, Maria, everything's good with you. Uh, Maria posted a picture earlier on Instagram, and uh, it was like golden hour, but it was like in, in the afternoon, like early or late afternoon. And it's just like it's gold where she is because of the uh, fires in California. Oh man, I'm behind in uh, just a couple minutes. Your family is so culinary advanced. I love it. <laughs> Thanks, Lou. Mike's is trying to make some lunch meat for my father in law, doing a turkey breast and a pork one. Ah, I'm not, I don't know, my family doesn't like pork loins. They, they always talk about how dry they are, so, you know, there's my two cents about that. Alright, so, uh, FCB says my 15-month-old loves barbecue, especially pulled pork. Nice. Holy cow, two sixty eight for prime brisket in North Carolina. What? What? Two sixty eight? dollars Damn. I'm I'm buying choice briskets at almost four dollars a pop per pound. Just as my Oklahoma Joe uh, starting on lump mixed with wood, but uh, my two fifty likes that wood. Well, I, you know what, and and that's fine. You know sometimes, like the amount of charcoal that you would have to use sometimes to get the same amount of fire that you can get from wood, it it, it can be. Um, I won't say off-putting, but one of the things that I found over time in using Vicky is that I, like, if I put a, a whole bag, I can put a whole bag of charcoal, like the lump charcoal in, excuse me, of, of blue, King's for blue, in a charcoal basket, and it'll chew through it in, like, four to six hours. If I put that same, like, a half a bag and angle it, it'll produce the same heat, and it will, um like cook for the same amount of time it's just like wasting the like the heat if you know what i mean so sometimes yeah look there he is uh so hold on uh fizzle 989 uh, is there any way to remove uh the warp out of my side burner uh over time it has warped a bit and smoke escapes um a wrench like a, a pipe wrench or you could probably try to get some sort of um like caulk like high temperature caulk or sealant even the gasket tape type stuff you know that'll fill in the gap but you you probably have to beat it out like take some heat to it in the opposite direction and beat it out like with a hammer and beat it out uh but other than that i don't i don't know how you would get a, a you know like a door that's warped out uh yeah, so what I was saying, Marcus, I knew you was going to say something about the Oklahoma tenderloin, the smoked bologna. Uh, Johnny says, uh, hey, Dash, what's in the world on Miss uh, Miles Sanders? You heard or what? I'm, I don't know. I, I, I picked him up on my fantasy team, and he was questionable. Uh, but they said that he should be he should be playing. So, but I think I saw he was questionable. Don't make me have to look at my fantasy team right now. I have a trip, try tip in the fridge that I found on sale. How should I cook it? Never cooked one before. So Carlos, um, you can do one or two things with it. You know, like reverse sear is good. Uh, I've also done them via sous vide, which is good. But you can cook tri tip hot and fast, just like you would in any other steak. You just have to be careful how you slice it. Uh. 
Dave. Excuse me. Dave says big ups. Big ups dash from Dave's Barbecue Licious in California. Well, thank you so very much. Man, my pork shoulder came out great thanks to Dash and his advice. Well, you know, you still had to cook it. You did the hard work, man. Have you ever deep fried beef ribs? I've deep fried baby back pork ribs before. It was delicious, but not sure if uh, it'll get the same result with these beef ribs. I need to do something with. Um, I have never deep fried. You know what you probably could do, Maria? Cut the meat off the bone and fry like little nuggets. So then you could kind of test it to see if that's a good meat means of cooking it uh, because I would hate for you to put that whole beef rib into some oil and then fry it up and just because of the sheer size of it I would think cutting it down into smaller pieces would probably make a lot more uh, sense as far as being able to cook it a lot more evenly as well but baby backs I mean you cut a single baby back and they're, they're, the meat is only but so big uh, so that probably didn't have that big of a deal a, a big of a problem cooking it but um i would say cut it into chunks and then see like do like a test piece or two and see if it if it if it fries i don't say fly but to see if it fries okay and then kind of go from there what's going on steven how you doing trini people's in the building todd is in the building he says hey yo uh no problem maria i mean you know sometimes i just I hate to, you know, I see people that they, they experiment. Like, I've experimented on briskets and stuff. But, like, the brisket I experimented on, it was like an 8-pound brisket. And the reason why I experimented on it was because I was buying briskets in bulk. And I needed a few extra pounds in order to get the, the volume discount. So, basically, I got the brisket for free. <laughs> Lewis's Beef Nuggets. Genius. Oh man, I every now and again I have you know I have a good idea. Pork loin is uh or some type of Mexican soup the wife is the wife is making. Alright, so Cal I have plenty of trots of experience. Reverse here is the way to go, Mario says. I just think outside of the box, guys. That's all that is. Let me try out just like carnitas, it tastes amazing. Oh, so David says, uh, I've deep fried pork ribs just like carnitas. It tastes amazing. Cut in thirds. All right. This is up. Mr. Charcoal Storage portion of this evening's program. It wasn't very much charcoal storage talk. I mean, just stack it up off the floor, Lou. Uh, excuse me, Todd. Um, but I was talking about how I have some cheap shelves, like some office shelves or like you know, shelves you would see. But they're metal shelves that I store my charcoal in. And, you know, the, the hard part about charcoal storage is you can't, like, condense or compress it. The only other thing I was talking about was, like, some of those, like, garage, like, hideaway type storage things where you might have a pulley or something. And if you could put the charcoal up. But I have some shelving in the back of my garage. And actually, I, I need to give you guys a tour. I cleaned, yo, I cleaned up in my garage. And when I say I cleaned up, it took me a month to clean up my garage. Uh, but my garage is, I mean, it's not spick and span. It's its an outdoor garage. It's like ashy as all hell. But, I mean, I cleaned and cleaned and cleaned. It took me a month, like I said, to clean up the garage. But it is night and day different from what it used to be to where it is now. I've rearranged, put, moved the refrigerators around, put some shelving up, um, lots of shelving storage to get things off of the floor, get things out of the way. The garage, oh, excuse me it had become and it I don't say had become but we've been in this house 15 years excuse me and every time my wife is tired of something in the house put it outside put it outside put it outside so i had to like organize all that stuff and between the stuff from the house and, and my stuff my tools my car parts my you know boxes from this and old computers and all types of other stuff i mean multiple trips to the dump uh multiple multiple yeah days out there in the heat cleaning uh don't forget to give dash a thumbs up well i appreciate that easy as well as steven he's just smash a thumbs up y'all todd we didn't talk about loading his own charcoal but uh but i wait todd we didn't talk about dash loading his own charcoal but i didn't 
So, you know what? Grumpus is funny because Grumpus commented, he, he commented today or on Instagram or on a video. He said, hey man, thanks for letting me know about this sale. I had, uh, I think he said he had like 12 or 15 bags put in his car. And I'm like, wait a minute, they put, they loaded it for you? He's like, yeah. And I didn't want to say it, you know, like his older guy, and they probably felt bad for him, you know. His Hawaiian shirt is probably what, what made him want to load his car for him. But he said his, his Mazda was struggling. Uh, but yeah, I, I had to, but you had to unload it all yourself. And I got my kids and their friends to unload the charcoal out of the back of the van. Uh, Todd says, I keep mine out of the bag inside a trash can with the lid. Never had a problem. I usually only have two bags uh, on hand at a time. Yeah, I just, you know, when it goes on sale, I sock up because I go I go through so much charcoal that me buying charcoal on sale versus having to buy charcoal in a pinch can make a uh, big difference. Um, and <clears throat> I've also been in a position where I've been cooking and like I started to cook and I'm looking at the amount of charcoal I have and I'm like, oh man, I, I got to use this sparingly because I could run out and there's no, you know, what can I do at two or three o'clock in the morning and I run out of charcoal. So I just like to make sure I have extra charcoal on hand. <laughs> is, there, is there any more deals on charcoal, Mike? I wish there was the, the, the deal I got. All right. So let me tell you guys what, what it was. So. Lowe's had the charcoal on sale for $16.88. So it was $3 off per twin bag, right? So 40 pounds was $3 off each 40 pound bag. Now my friend, so what ended up bringing this whole thing up was I, I Facebook reminded me, it's been three years since I bought all of that charcoal and I put it on the trailer. Um, where I think I did a video picking up 300 pounds of charcoal or whatever I, my math was wrong i think anyway um so I, I posted a picture and i said hey you know i wish charcoal will go on sale again so my buddy was like you need charcoal i'm like i always need charcoal he's like like i said in the video say less so he's like hey dude Lowe's has it on sale right now for 16.88 i'm like eh. he said i'll get you additional 10 percent off i'm like that's a little bit better. So by the time it's all said and done, I spent $325 on those 20 bags of charcoal. I did the math. It worked out to be $16.25 per bag. So yay. But I mean, you know, with tax and everything like that. But I mean, was it worth it? Yeah. It's one of those things, just like I was talking about in the, in the video a few weeks ago or a week or two ago. When I have money in my pocket, I reinvest it into the business because if I don't, I will waste it on stupid stuff. Um, so, you know, buying charcoal, $300 worth of charcoal, did I really have to have it? I could have waited, but $300 got me more charcoal then than $300 would get me in, you know, in the next month or so. What happens when you mix charcoal lump with charcoal? Nothing much. You you get the flavor from the lump and you get the longevity from the briquettes. All right. So Ty said when he got when Home Depot had to blow out on wherever briquettes a few years ago, he got a lot. Yep. This is how long the charcoal will last. I think it'll last about a year, like eight months to a year is what I'm hoping for. Uh, Johnny, um, I, I'm, I'm going to be using more of it because I have it. Um, but then again, the smokers that use more charcoal would be Vicky. And as opposed to me having to use as much charcoal in Vicky, I'm actually been cooking with the drum on the side of the house since I've, you know, refurbed it and brought it back to life. And uh, I don't have to use as much charcoal in the drum as I would in Vicky for longer cooks. But I mean, they end up using about the same amount of charcoal, but the drum is so much closer to the house and it is, uh, it uses slightly less charcoal, let's put it that way. Shoot, Mario, everybody misses the $10, 40 pound kinks for deals.
Everybody saying hi to everybody else. Johnny, how are you doing this evening, sir? This is Johnny, and if you would like a view to a grill, <laughs> uh, dude, man. Walmart had uh, 88 euro special on 36 pounds of Royal Oak briquettes. Yes, uh, FCB. Unfortunately, that deal was not in my area. I could they don't they did not sell that Royal Oak briquette bag in my area at all. Is the drum more efficient than Vicky? No. Um, the drum and Vicky are about the same efficiency. The the thing though with Vicky is Vicky is insulated, but Vicky is bigger, so it takes about the same amount of charcoal. But the, the trade-off is I can cook four times as much, well, twice as much food in Vicky than I can in one of the drums. Hey, Maria, thank you very much and everyone in the chat. Uh, have a great evening, night. Stay safe, y'all. You too, Maria. Definitely you be safe as well. Thank you for popping in and saying hey. Really do appreciate it. <laughs> I'm not mocking you, man. I'm not mocking you. Trust me, man. I, I, I dude, I, I really do. I, I dig what you're doing, but this is this irks me when I see a gray hair sticking out. Am I the only one that does this? Oh, and this is a gray hair that, see, it's gray and it's black. So this is one that was just turning. You're a traitor. That's what you are. Black hair turning gray. Traitor. I thought the real old stuff was garbage, burnt up fast. Uncle Bull, um. I can't, uh, I can neither confirm nor deny. Uh, the, it's one of those things, Uncle Bull, that I think you're going to have to kind of try it out for yourself and you can decide because sometimes what ends up happening is your cooker might react to a specific type of fuel better or worse than someone else. I know it's crazy, but it, it really, it really could um, just be what it is you are using it on uh carlos's last fall i bought 20 excuse me 16 pound bags of royal classic briquettes for a dollar 77 each uh, it's more for grilling it's like uh strong and bitter when used in the weber smoky mountain you know why it's probably that way um carlos if if you've ever had a fire like a wood burning fire and it's not burning um completely it it ends up being bitter and you'll you'll get the uh, like a over smoked flavor and that's probably because of the fact that that oak or the you know royal oak that oak in the briquettes is not allowed uh, being allowed to breathe properly like it probably wants to just run full on and if you're trying to, to throttle it back and, and smoke with it it probably doesn't burn that well. It doesn't burn well that way. How about that? Uh, Uncle Bull says that's what it did to me in my barrel. Huh. And maybe it's just not a low and slow type of uh, cook uh, or, or a cook fuel. My acorn burned up all day and night. Well, the, the acorn, the, the thing with the acorn is it is uh, ceramic. So once you get it going, once you get it heated up, it just, you kind of just have to trickle the coal so yeah fcb says uh lowe's here in upstate new york has ridge by real old briquettes for 7.99 for 16 pounds I, man look, that's the one good but bad thing about when you see charcoal deals not everywhere carries the same stuff so yeah i can't find all of the charcoal the same that you guys all can Oh man, we're almost at 50 likes. Somebody please hit that thumbs up button for me. I would greatly appreciate it. I'm looking at 49 on my end. Carlos, uh, you just multiply your gray hairs by 10. Ah, Steven. Look. I, I mean, 10, 11, 12. Ah. Uh, Carlos says that sounds exactly right. What is exactly right? The fact that, that it might not burn efficiently. I guess, Marcus, you're laughing at the fact that I called the, the hair a traitor. All right. Yeah, I'm still showing 50. I'm showing 50 on, on my, my 
phone. I see 51 on my uh, laptop here. I see two dislikes too. Oh, sorry. Big just a second hour. I'm here for the finish. Yes, indeed. He's like the 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 last man, the anchor man on the relay squad. Anchor, uh, she's I said anchor. Victor, I appreciate that, man. Definitely. Mario, thank you so very much. Now I see 51 on my phone. That is awesome. Uh, you cooked your on your birthday before, or is that day off limits? I I could possibly on my birthday at 10:4. So um, I think I have cooked on my birthday, and actually, yo, I had this girl. Hmm. What's funny is earlier I was talking about a guy who kind of ran me through the ringer with doing four estimates for him. Oddly enough, his sister or his family was supposed to be picking up food on my birthday last year. And I was one of those things where I'm like, yeah, I'll cook. I'll get everything done by a certain time. And then I can kind of go out and do something with the missus. And I'm like, enjoy the day or whatever. Yo, I was literally stuck in the house, which is why I do not have people pick up food from my house. Because, no, I do not want to be on someone else's timetable. But, yeah, it was his family. Now that I think about it, last year on my birthday, I was stuck waiting around for this person to come and pick it up because the person who was supposed to come pick it up had car trouble and then there was an emergency. So actually it was two or three different things. There was an emergency, there was car trouble, and then they ended up sending somebody from like Southern Maryland all the way up here to pick it up and she got lost and like it was a whole ordeal. Like she was supposed to be at my house at like three or four o'clock, didn't get here till like nine o'clock. I mean, I was so, I was done. I was done. I was like, yo, this is on my birthday. And I'm like, ah, it's whatever. I can't pull mine, otherwise I have seven bicycles left. <laughs> All right. Uh, Uncle Bull says 52 here. Steven, he says you're now at 52. Thank you, Steven, man. I definitely appreciate you. I really do. Uh, those dislikes are like times. Uh, all the times we live in nowadays. Yeah, it's all right. Dude, Bumpy, dude, I, you name the circumstance and I have been through it, dog. I have been through it. But that's why when I tell you guys, yo, I don't do the whole pickup stuff. Nah, man, because I don't want to be on somebody else's timetable. Even the, there's one lady who comes to my house and she, she picks up food from time to time. I let her know. I'm like, yo, your food will be ready between this time and this time. And she's like, okay. Uh, there was one time I cooked some, I cooked, uh, spare ribs for her and the spare ribs took longer than I anticipated to cook. And I, 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 I apologize so profusely. I'm like, I'm so sorry. These, you know, I was expecting them to take this long. They took longer than I, she's like, oh, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Blah, blah, blah. She's like, I'll go run an errand and I'll go sit and, you know, go someplace and kind of hang out and just let me know when they're ready. I'm like, okay, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to hold people up. So, you know, I know what my time is worth. Don't don't waste my time, man. And Marcus, you have no black hairs left. I've seen your uh your goatee. Uh, get the energy drink. No, I don't have any energy drinks this evening. Oh, you can't do it. Oh. <sighs> I'm telling you, Uncle Bull, man, don't don't even talk about it. Don't talk about it. No. He was talking about why I would need an energy drink. Yo, Drew, uh, Bumpy says he went to that on Memorial Day. Dog, no, sir. And, and that's exactly why, man, because it's like, oh, I'll get to him when I get to him. He got my food. He wants this money. No, you're going to pay me up front, all right? And then with the whole you paying me up front thing, yo, uh, I have something else to do. If you're not going to be here in between this time and this time, I'm out. And you are now going to have to wait on me. And if I deliver it to you, you're going to pay me to bring it to you. And that is it. Usually that scares folks. They'd be like, yo, no, no, no. Or I'm, I'll tell them point blank. If you're not here, I will give you, I will refund you 50% of your deposit and I'm going to sell your food. That's it. I'm not, no, we're not playing this game. You Sometimes you just have to man up, more or less, unfortunately. Uh, 
Dude, man, I... Mm -mm, no, sir. No, sir. Ugh. Sorry. That was that was all me, and that that was that was this. It's catching up. Been a long day. It's hot because I'm drinking it slow. Ugh. Do I deliver to Michigan, uh, Mike? It would uh, it would be a hell of a delivery fee. A hell of a delivery fee. Uh, I'd I'd bill you like I would when I'm delivering pinball machines. I bill those at $60, $60 flat fee plus $0.60 cents per mile round trip. Uh, what percent do I get? 100% Uncle Bull. I want everything paid in full up front. There are only a select few people who either I've done business with before or have kind of balked at the whole, like some, like some people want to pay me in cash and I'm cool with that. But as long as you tell me, hey, you're going to pay me in cash, then I'll, I don't mind cooking for you. Uh, but then there are sometimes people just wait to the last minute. Listen, if your event is on Saturday, you need to be paid in full by Wednesday. Because I don't want to have to take the money out of my pocket to buy your stuff. I want my business to be self-sustaining. Now, this big wedding that I had uh, last week, uh, we finalized the menu on Tuesday. And I sent, the, or no, we finalized the menu on Monday night because she was waiting for respondents. You know, the, these times we live in, we had to wait to the last minute. Um, and so a week out, basically Monday of last week, and uh, her event was on Friday. And I, I'm telling you, I couldn't, I couldn't, I, I won't say I couldn't get the money any sooner. But because I couldn't send the invoice any sooner, I couldn't get paid any sooner. And I told him, I said, listen, the invoice needs to be paid in full by Thursday. And it was paid on, like, Friday morning, maybe? And that was okay. Because I knew they were, they wanted the job to be done, and I knew the people who were getting it done. I mean, I've known these folks for a couple of years. Like, these are car friends of mine. So, I know them. But somebody random, brand new, no pay, no. Nah. So what ends up happening is I need the invoice to be paid seven days in advance. And that is a a factor to eliminate those people who are just kicking the tires and, oh, I, I'm thinking about it, I don't know. I, nope, 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 here's your invoice. If you would like, now what I also tell people is this, if you want to secure your date, that requires a 50% deposit in most cases, depending on the amount. If it's like under $1,000, 50% deposit. If it's over $1,000, I'll do a third. And that usually will cover some of the costs. Um, but yeah, a third, yeah. It was actually just a wedding reception, uh, Bumpy. Uh, Steven says, uh, Dash, I might run the late planes that aren't uh, flying like they used to. But I'll bring a bottle of punch in. Look, dude, come on. Come on, come on. Uh, hey, don't don't worry about it, man. Just just you know what? Just two bottles of punch and we'll call it even. All right. Yeah. I try to drive the work on that. No, no. Hey. <laughs> Sorry, Victor. Sorry. Uh, so it was just a reception. So what ended up happening was so these guys, you know, young couple. They got married last year, like last May, I believe. They just went to like a Justice Set of Peace type thing. And then, you know, I guess they didn't have much money or whatever. And they're like, oh, you know, and plus they're real chill. <gasps> real laid back, excuse me, real chill. So they got married. And they're like, all right, we'll, we'll do a big reception, a big party in a year. So they planned it for May of this year. And of course, you know, we all know what happened. And they're like, yeah, can't do it in May. We're going to push it out. I'm like, all right, let me know. So... They pushed it out to this past weekend. And it was cool, but they ended up having, there was 40 people, about 45 people, like 40 guests. And, and you know, it was, my wife went with me. So the two of us, um, the bartender, uh, DJ, and then them. So it was about 45 people, they're all told. Uh, have you watched The Chef's Table on, Bar on uh, Netflix? So I am on episode three right now with Rodney Scott, or no. I just finished episode three. I'm on episode four. And it's pretty inspirational. Uh, I don't know Tootsie, you know, 
Um, I've heard of Tootsie, and I remember Alton. One of his, one of his first videos that I remember seeing of Alton's, he was at Snows. Um, the dude that was cooking with fire, that was pretty dope. Uh, the second episode, and then of course Rodney Scott, I think he's pretty dope as well. Just because he, you know, where he came from and what he was doing and his story. Like, I've never heard his story and listening to his story was kind of, it was it was really dope. Uh, so, like I said, I'm on episode four now. <laughs> Thank you, Steven. I appreciate that. Uh, what are the most popular sides that are requested? So, it's not necessarily about what's requested. It's about what I offer. All right. Um, I have, as of late, been doing baked beans, uh, been doing green beans or string beans, and then I do cold sides, potato salad, macaroni salad, coleslaw. Uh, I did some brisket beans for this event over the weekend, and everyone enjoyed them a lot. So brisket beans are up there as far as the things that I am going to do. Jamie, you'll appreciate this. I actually got my wife to help me with the sides uh, this weekend or this past weekend. Because of the fact that she was here on Friday, she cooked the green beans and the brisket beans, and it worked out for me because I'm like, oh, I'll stay in my lane. I'll cook my, uh, I'll cook the, the meats. I'll provide some brisket for the beans, some some trimmings for the beans, and uh, uh, yeah. So we left the green beans vegetarian. Uh, I think she may have put some butter in them, but uh, the brisket beans we well the baked beans we put brisket in them and then i did uh like i said i did some uh coleslaw and then we did side salads well we did salads um as a second cold side so we did two hot sides two cold sides and what i ended up doing was i used these uh flip the camera i used these to put these salads in so I bought bags of salad from Sam's and I ended up doing 40 portions of salad. So I bought uh, five bags, so 10 pounds of salad. And by the time it was all said and done, it was uh, three and some change. Uh, almost four ounces of salad went into each bowl. But like I said, my wife just laid the bowls out and she equally portioned them out and kind of filled in which ones needed it. And it worked out really well. Um, one of the other things too, so we did individual salads so I wouldn't have to be in a bowl trying to put salad on someone's plate. We found individual packets of salad dressing. And then I also took and put some barbecue sauce in little cups and um, put those out individually so that, you know, we could kind of limit the cross contamination of people touching multiple things. Uh, and it worked out really well. We served everyone. Which was a little difficult, uh, only because, you know, we got 10 people, 8 to 10 people at a time, and we kind of had to do that. Being Queens Unite, Jamie says. Uh, yo, that grilled caviar? I was thinking, I was looking at that like, damn, I need to find out where I can get some of that seaweed. I don't even like caviar, but damn, I'm trying to grill some caviar. I want to grill some, some lettuce, some bok choy. And, yo, my man was cooking everything over fire, like live fire. If you have not watched the barbecue pit mat or the barbecue chef's table on Netflix, dude, you, you need to watch it. Has anyone heard of brisket stuffed pretzels? They're so good. No, I have not. Uh, I'm not a big stuffing stuff instead of other stuff stuff type thing. Uh, even the Texas beans are king is the side. All right, well, I'll keep that in mind. Love me some brisket and whistleberries. Whistleberries? Go on. Uh, Jimbo says, uh, do you buy or make your sauce? I doctor something up, I get off the shelf. Only reason I do that is because there's a lot of folks that have uh, food allergies, and if I tell them what type of sauce that I'm using, they can usually say, okay, I can eat that, or okay, I cannot. That's the only reason why I, I get something and doctor it up. Uh, I'm going to have to watch that now. Yo, Mike, do yourself a favor. And, yeah, the guy with the grilled caviar was full of himself, and he backed it up with his food. So I guess he can uh, be that way. You know what, Johnny? I, my man was in the beginning. I'm like, yo, this dude is going all out cooking everything with fire. 
And then he explained why he cooked everything with fire. And I was like, all right, I get it. And then when I saw him cook everything with fire, I was like, yo, where's this man's restaurant? No, Sydney? S- Sydney? A- Australia? Like, hmm. I don't, I don't know how I'm going to get to Sydney, but I would love to taste this man's food. I have to say, watching this show will get you inspired. Dude, Drew, I definitely have been inspired. Like, seriously. Look, I was watching Rodney Scott cook a pig, and I'm like, I don't even know how I'm going to cook a pig or what I'm going to cook a pig on. I'm like, damn, I want to cook a pig. I want to cook a pig. I want that pig to turn out just like Rodney's does. I, I can cook a pig. I think I could cook a pig. Like that. Yeah, I, I mean, like, yeah, you know, I'll probably cook a pig. I'm, like, psyching myself up to be able to try to cook a damn pig. Uh... <laughs> Carlos says beans make you whistle if you know what I mean. I hear you, man. I hear you. My dad used to say all the time, beans, beans, the magical fruit. The more you eat, the more you toot. <laughs> uh, the other one was uh, beans, beans, the magical. No, beans, beans are good for your heart. The more you eat, the more you fart. I think that was something he said. Something, something along those lines. Uh, but I mean. You know, dad jokes hit differently when you were a kid than when you are at, like now as I am. Uh, Jimbo says smart. I do the same. That's what's up. Yeah, I mean, uh, you 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 have to be careful nowadays, especially with so many people with food allergies, and it's serious, man. You you know, it is it is. I mean, you, this is life and death. I would hate 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 to be the blame because I'm playing a game like no 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 there's not none of that and and like cause someone bodily harm or like even just like intestinal pain because I told them something uh incorrect. Uh <laughs> Johnny says, yeah, all of a sudden Australia was not that far. Uh that's what I mean about whistleberries. I get it now. He said only cooks uh, one steak on fire. He just perfected it. 200 days, dog. Yo, that 200, 200, 200 days. How did you decide? Not even that. But how do you have the ability to tell yourself, I'm going to start this steak and I'm going to let it sit for 200 days? Because I know when I tried to dry age a steak in my refrigerator upstairs, I was like chopping at the bit at 30 days, at 45 days. This man went 200 days. How much preparation and forethought did that take? That's what I'm talking about. Like, man. Uh, Rodney's episode was amazing. Yeah, Ben. I, like I said, I, I definitely was inspired. Like, real talk. I want to cook a whole hog. I don't know how or why or for what, but. Ah, uh, yeah. Beans, beans, magical fruit. Yeah, <laughs> the more you eat, the more you eat. Right, sir? <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, the more you fart, the better you feel. <laughs> I feel uh, so let's eat beans at every meal. Grumpus, I forgot that last part about the, uh, the, the, yeah. Uh, what's your favorite charcoal briquettes? Uh, Johnny, uh, everyone who has watched my channel for a long time knows my favorite briquettes uh or whatever's on sale my favorite charcoal is whatever's on sale my mom used to tell me the dirty jokes as a kid and uh what a kid to go to school tell the jokes <laughs> more you teeth the better you feel Phil. uh beans for every meal yep everybody's got a similar oh damn dude there, there had to have been some sort of let, like he got locked out of the refrigerator or locked out of wherever he kept it. And oh, 200 days though. I'm trying to watch my son in the live stream while I'm making barbecue sauce. Hey, B, completely understand. Man, I ain't putting no damn holes in my yard. My yard is already jacked up as is. You can dig a hole in your yard. I'll come and help you dig a hole. I ain't helping you dig a hole. I'll sit around and help you drink around that hole, but I ain't digging no damn hole, Marcus. You crazy, old school. My, mm, mm, mm. You want you and uh, what's the name? Fennel, Art Fennel. Go ahead and dig a damn hole. All right, I ain't digging no hole. If anything, I'll go buy, you know, 20, 30 cinder blocks and I'll figure it out. 
But I just so happen to have a stainless steel cooker that looks like it'll probably be able to cook a pig on it. I just haven't been able to use it. I've been busy doing other things. Uh, like I said, I, I cleaned out my garage. Seriously, it has been a month, almost a month and a half that I've been cleaning it in the garage. Never broke again, uh, money gang. I am good, man. I'm good. I'm good. Just chilling, you know, enjoying the conversation. Steak doesn't last long in my house. Shoot, Mike, I know. Cinder blocks and tin. Well, is it tin or was it galvanized? But it was it was definitely uh, corrugated. Uh, you can't dig out there too many rocks. Well, uh, you can dig. Uh, nope, you can't even dig in my damn house. I thought about it. I was like, where can I like put the cinder block? I'm telling you, I was they I thought about it. I was like, where can I put the cinder blocks and make one of them damn like make a pit? And I was like, how oh, how can I make a burn barrel? I can't set a live fire like that. Just I, I'm in Baltimore City. I can't do stuff like that. I had somebody recently tell me on a video about the charcoal. Why did you waste your money on charcoal? Why would you get a, a burn barrel and make a I can't have a burn barrel everywhere it's not this country is some of where you guys live i live in a city i can't do that i don't have a parking lot that i can just set up with some gravel and no i can't just let the ashes go like that. no i'm probably supposed to buy code put some sort of ash catch on top of my um my little fire pit you small whole hog forty five dollars and fit in a pellet something for Tracy. Well, Drew, no, no, man. My wife would probably have a fit if I bought home a suckling pig. She'd be mad. Hey, you got this baby pig. I'm not eating the baby pig. I'm sure as hell not eating the daggone pig. So you gonna need to eat the pig. Eat the pig, anime. Uh man, Mike, city different from country living. Pfft, who are you telling? Uh, I mean, it it amazes me sometimes what people say in the comments. And I'm like, if only I could do that. Like, I live in a city. I, I don't live in a country. I have neighbors that I would have to worry about burning their houses down. Like, seriously. It's just, it's not the same. It's not the same. Um... But, and then one of the other things too, I get charcoal cheaper than I do lump. I mean, I do wood. So I won't say I'm saving money. Yeah. Mike says, I hear cows in the morning and only 900 people in town. What? Those little cat making a long head cheese had me rolling. Yo, the, the, the hog head cheese? No. That so that's his brother, right? And they put that no, I, I I don't even know it was that was a concoction. My man put every spice and seasoning he had in his whole cupboard into that hog head cheese. Every single one. That stuff was so gelatinous and I mean man. Uh, when I started barbecue, I found Rodney and Tootsie's, uh, check out Helen Turner and be crackling. Alright. Bring, uh, CA to B-Town. Here's to the next wildfire. Yeah? Look, Jeff, I was talking about you earlier. I was talking about you earlier. I was talking about something being wicked hot. And I was saying, uh, you know, like my man Jeff would say something about being wicked hot. So, Steve, Big Steve, are you on a live stream? You just sent me a text message. I have to check out the message a little later. Uh, no. Uh, so, Johnny, it looks like I missed your message. Uh, he said, did you ever get any potatoes out of your bucket garden? So, Johnny, one, the deer have decimated the garden. That's why I haven't been doing many. Actually, I haven't done an update in three or four weeks on the garden. Because the deer keep eating all of the they they keep eating up the damn garden. The last time I showed you guys the deer, uh, what they did, they have just gone ham. They every couple days when I do get some leaves that grow on the on the sweet potato plants, they come and eat them all. So 
and I don't know like the pepper plants and the other stuff it did not do very well and I don't know again this is another one I can't watch that right now um, uh, they have like they've eaten everything and it's just dead like it's, it's, it's dying or dead we got very little harvest I know Mike um, yeah you should be able to do a whole hog and bet Bessie B-E-S-S uh, B-E-S-I-E Bessie uh, yes I probably can do a whole hog the only thing about doing a whole hog and Bessie that I would think the way the heat comes in I would end up having to rotate the, the pig ah, no problem Steve uh, chicken wire for sure like I'm gonna have to build some sort of structure around the but then it what's gonna end up happening the sweet potato is gonna grow out because they run they're gonna it's gonna grow out and down uh, Jeff says whole hog is the best. Never done it. Never done it. Never done it. Uh, but you know, we will. We will see. Um, I, like I said, if I can find, and I know I could. I, I know there's a butcher up the street, and I could probably find a smaller, you know, pig. The heat this year has been kind. Uh, not been kind to gardens between the heat and the freaking deer. And I think that's that's part of the problem. The deer have nothing else to eat. So now that they found that we have this garden, they are all in it. All in it. And they're, they're destroying it. I mean, they freaking ate up everything. All right, hold on, guys. I'll be right back. Time to get a beer. I'm not going to pee, I promise. I'm not right, sir. Tissus <sighs> number two was cooking and it's still hot in the kitchen. <sighs> Salute. Uh, Uncle Bull says there's a lot of demand for a whole hog. Maybe where you are, but not where I am. Did Dash just say he was going to cook us all a whole hog? Uh, no. B, I did not. All right, so you are still here. <laughs> <laughs> Grumpus says hot deer is a solution. Man, Victor says country living uh, has its advantages. For example, no deer problems, just solutions. Y'all can have it. I'm t I, look, I invited a couple of you guys to come over to my house and take care of the deer problem. Um, Jimmy says maybe he can do one for a dash bash. Maybe, Jimmy, maybe. I filled the belly with apple, sauerkraut, and packed whole, poked whole stuff with garlic and rib quarters. All right. Build a pit and make it a family thing to do a whole, to do the hog. Ah, they won't. They don't have the attention or the patience to do it. I'm the only one that would want to sit there. Maybe taste us number two might sit there. Um, taste us number three has shown interest, but taste us number one would be on his phone, and my wife definitely probably wouldn't want to sit there and. And where the bugs would be the problem. Sitting outside in the in the heat having to cook and the bugs. Oh, I even had a bear sighting two weeks ago. Jeez. <laughs> All right, she says I got a walnut or bladder. <laughs> okay, tiki tucky. <laughs> do, 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 do. Whatever the polka music is. <laughs> KB says, howdy, peeps. Just got off work. Well, salute. Hopefully, you can raise one too soon. Uh, <laughs> All right, so says, heck yeah, bro. Finishing up editing and doing the thumbnail for tomorrow's video. Yeah. I did my... I do that. I edited two videos today. I edited a video... Uh, yeah, two. Because... All right. So, I tell you guys, and, and Ricer, you'll understand this because, uh, so last, the, the cook that I did on Friday, it was for a reception. It was a wedding reception. I started to cook, and by the time I did the cook and started the smoker, got everything going, did the cook, brought everything in the house, pulled everything, separated everything, cut everything up. I have about an hour, hour and a half worth of footage. Now, cutting it down, the first portion of it, like me getting the smoker started, 
I had a problem where I had to do some emergency welding on my smoker in the middle of the night to almost three o'clock in the morning. I had to do some welding on my smoker. That portion of the video was about 10 or 15 minutes long. So I decided to cut it up into pieces. Well, if I'm going to do a multi-part video, I try not to put the multi-part video up on a Thursday because I don't want you to wait until next Tuesday for the next part. So I had to edit a video out of sequence in order to put it up for tomorrow. So I hope you guys uh, appreciate the effort that I went through and edited two videos today so that you would have a video tomorrow. Now the video that's going up tomorrow and actually you guys are here, it's late enough. So let me share with you guys the link for the video for tomorrow. you guys want to see the video that's going to go up uh, tomorrow morning, there it is. Uh, I've done them in the pit around 275 oil container and I ran it over tissue and gas and charcoal. Huh. 12 hours I can do a 125 pound pig. A 50 will fit in a new cooker hog. That, oh, I know Victor, I know. Uh, Comrade says I'm late. Maybe you guys talked about it already. Kamado Joe is entering into the kettle game. Hmm. No, we have not talked about that, Comrade. <laughs> Uh, 75 pounds will fit in the big trigger. Jeez, I don't have a big trigger. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Bumpy. If you build it, they will come. Mm, get out of here with that crap, man. <laughs> Cut that out. Uh-uh. Dude, I've seen one company around here cooking whole hogs. One company. And... Like, I looked into it because I had someone ask me about cooking whole hog, and I'm like, I don't know if you want to pay me for that. Uh, and when I, like I said, when I looked into it, there was one company in the area that did whole hogs. And I said, for the, for the amount of money that you have to pay me to do a whole hog, I can do pork shoulder for you for, like, half the price. And they were like, well, word? And I said, you'll get, you know, as much, if not more, meat as far as a yield and they were like yeah we'll do that we're not gonna do a whole hog so yeah scrap that hey be easy bumpy look I gotta get up tomorrow I'll probably be up tomorrow at like four o'clock I have two briskets I need to do tomorrow for my uncle I told you I gotta get them done he's supposed to be at my house at like three o'clock I might set the alarm for 3 30 I don't know we'll see but I gotta get up and do those tomorrow would it be cheaper to build a tobacco smoker or to buy uh, or to buy one two fifty gallons max? So Mike, it depends, man. If you have the skill to be able to make one, then you could probably make it cheaper. The only problem is if you make it and it sucks and you have to end up buying one or starting from scratch and making another one, that's where you run into problems. Uh, they have a video posted of the kettle over on the barbecue brethren. Well, after after you finish maybe you can check it out after you finish here all right hey guys if you haven't already hit that thumbs up button for me i would greatly appreciate it if you could uh before we wrap up but um i know a whole a whole hog is coming soon throw some smoked uh, pork belly in with those shoulders be like having a whole hog uh you're probably right Uncle bull uh i i I'm not even gonna lie. I am definitely intimidated by the, the the thought of doing a whole hog. Like seriously. I don't not think that I could get it done. I, I it's just I don't want it to be a waste of money. Um, me messing it up. Have you ever seen Ryan Scott's uh, cook a whole hog? I was really impressed with how he does it. I, I mean, aside from watching how I saw it done on that uh, the barbecue chef's table, I mean, other than that, I don't know how he does it. I haven't seen a technique, but I do know where I can go to like a whole hog school or a whole hog class, but. I don't know if the amount of money that I will spend on that whole hog class would be worth it uh, to me in um, 
right? Because I don't do whole hogs. And we made it to 55 tonight. Whoa! Jeff says they're easy peasy. Whoa, 58 likes. 59? That's what's up. We're almost at 60. Uh, concentrate heats and hips in the front quarters. Yeah, so, um, and, and Jeff, I tell you, looking at, at Rodney Scott from that chef's table thing, he said primarily they put the, the, uh, the heat at the hams and the, and the, the butts and shoulders. So, I mean, I can do that. I mean, I, that, I'm going to say that's a no brainer, but I can figure that part out. It is like, but they have, I'm going to say specialized equipment, but they have the ability to lay the whole thing out. And I'm sure that helps as far as it cooking faster. I know Kent has done a whole hog on a rotisserie. Uh, I do have rotisseries around here. I just don't know. I just don't know how I would set one up. Uh, Sam Jones does it too. don't know who Sam Jones is. There's two videos. One is his actual place with his parents and the other. Is the new restaurant he opened? Cypress, Laura, how are you doing this evening? Country style on YouTube. Uh, so John, you talking about Art Fidel? Oh man, Marcus, we got another one who knows who knows about Art Fidel. Uh, I've seen them uh, take large water tanks to put them together and uh, put hot coals on top. All right. Building is cheaper. I built my 500 gallon for under two thousand uh, dollars. If, if you stuff it, it takes longer. Flat out as fast as yeah. I would definitely want to do it flat out. Double D Mike, what's going on? Would you pay to see my remix and cook the class? Um, Los out of curiosity probably, but the problem with going to like a my remixing class, a lot of the things he does because of my you know I won't say old habits, or but things that work for me. Um, not that I don't think I would learn something. It's just I don't know how much I would learn. Uh, so, yeah. But, I mean, I'm not saying I don't want to go to or I wouldn't go to any cooking class. It's just how much is that class going to cost me and what is the value I'm going to get from that class. I mean, because Amy Mills, I get emails from her every now and again about classes and it's uh, Amy Mills is the daughter of I think it's Mike Mills and they have 17th Street barbecue they're in like southern Illinois and I mean I would love to go to one of their classes but it's just far away and they're not cheap you know Mo Kaysan and the dude from uh, uh, barbecue guru they have classes not too too far away um, and the last class they were having was right when the pandemic started to pop off and and they're having to cancel the class but I really wanted to go to the class um, some one of you guys uh, John I think it was John Grinnell he, he said hey have you seen this have you heard about this and I hadn't heard about the class and now when I looked up where it was what huh month that charcoal will last me longer than a month man trust me adam it'll last me longer than a month adam i need you out here man i need it i need a smoker i need some repairs to my smoker too but we're not gonna talk about that right now oh gosh adam uh you'd be proud of me i had to do some emergency welding on vicky the vertical smoker at uh it was almost three o'clock in the morning uh last weekend or last week Sam Jones is a legend. The whole hog family talked uh, through generations. Why light in? <laughs> Adam, I appreciate that, man. I, I I know you would. I know you would. Uh, hopefully, how's the the smoker that went out to California? How is he liking it? Uh, the rail. The, the, the rack support broke off. Well, not broke off. It like rusted away. It chipped off. And I had to weld it back on. I was in the same classes, but I would rather come and cook with a few people I follow to learn from them also. Yeah. Cheapest modern mixing class is $800. His upper class is $1,500. God loves it. 
All right. Well, I'm very, very happy to hear that he's digging the smoker. Uh, yeah. All right, guys. Well, uh, Adam, you know the reason why I'm ending the live stream is because you just got here, right? Just, just letting you know it's your fault that we are leaving. I am leaving this live stream. Hey, uh, I, but I do need to get to sleep. I have to uh, get up in the morning so I can cook these briskets. <laughs> it's not it's not your fault, Adam. I, I have to go to bed. I do, actually, I have two briskets I have to cook. Um, so, right, sir, you be easy, sir. Have a great evening. Adam, you also be easy. Here is the link for tomorrow's video one more time. Um... Brian says Myron posts classes on his Facebook for free. Yeah. Everyone enjoy the rest of your week. Bryce says, yes, indeed. Yes, Cyber's Blue, I am leaving with Laura. I have to get up in the morning. I have uh, two briskets I need to cook. I need them to have them done. Uh, good night, TC, BFN, Dash, and all. Have a good night. All right, Drew, be easy. Jimmy, thank you, sir. Jimmy, you and I need to talk. Um, I was looking into uh, looking into something like eight gallons, something or other. And I, 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 I won't say I have questions because I'm doing my research now. But I, yeah, I was looking at an eight gallon uh, stainless, something or other. Have a good evening, Victor. Good night. Let's just go to sleep. Everyone, don't forget to thumbs up this video before you leave out. Good night, OG Eric. Definitely. Uh, have a good night, uh, Dash, Uncle Bull says. S William says, uh, safe and blessed night. Thank you so very much, guys, for hanging out. I really do appreciate it. I know I say it often, but I, I mean, you guys could be anywhere doing anything else, and you're here hanging out with me, and I really, really do appreciate it. Uh, Jimmy, I will take you up on that offer. Uh, you know, we'll, once I, I'm going to do some more research, and, and then I'll hit you with my questions. I, I figured you would probably be a, uh, a plethora of information, so, you know, we can do some information sharing. All right, so thank you so very much, guys. Again, I really, really can't say thank you enough, and I, I do appreciate it. Yo, Topanga? <laughs> Topanga. I was expecting a, 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 a duck joke, Marcus. I'm, I'm a little let down. That I didn't have any more duck jokes from you. Uh, Jamie threw snuck one in there. Uh, but I was expecting more duck jokes from you. Uh, <sighs> Adam on here as well. He's got tons for him to make. Uh, B, I called Adam first, okay? And technically, my middle name is Adam, so he's more, you know, he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you too, Jamie. Have a great night. Uh, come on, one more. Let's get this like 65. Yeah, that'd be nice if we can get another like. That would be dope. Good night, Dash. Stay safe. And I'll uh, see you next week from the more bots. <laughs> Did you ever look up that uh, Maitland Ward? No. Oh. No, but I do remember that, <laughs> that we were talking about her, and I will not say what it is that she does, but, uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Maitland Ward Baxter. Yeah. Thanks. I will do my research on that too. Uh, <laughs> good night, do you do, sir? No, I'm not awesome. You're awesome, okay? Look, Uncle Bull, we, uh, I'm on it. I'm on it. Uh, I'll run it. Just like your last bag of charcoal is out in the rain. Oh. <laughs> Hey, Jamie, I heard it's raining there pretty good right now. Uh, my guy in Austin, he was saying that the servers lost power because obviously when the building there, uh, when it rain, he said when a drop of rain hits the building, now all of a sudden they lose power in the building. 
Damn, I heard. Yeah. I heard there were storms. Every time he he calls and and he's like, "Oh, we lost power, servers are down, blah blah blah." I'm like, I'm thinking of you guys. I'm like, hey, y'all are right there, because there were storms last Friday. Um, was was the last time he had to go in because they lost power and they couldn't bring all the servers back up, and then they lost power again today. So, anyway, all right, guys, uh, I'm really gone for real this time. Thank you so very much again. I really appreciate it, and I'll see y'all next week.